All right. Top of the morning to you, gentlemen. Morning. Oh, gosh. Morning. What is it, January 31st? Mm-hmm. Okay. Welcome to January 31st. It's the end of the month, the year 2024, and we are reading the book of John, and it's uh, chapter 8, verses 12 through 30. Oh, that's a big one. Um, let's do one reading today. You guys okay with that? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to have to force myself to really listen. Um, I'll Great. pray. And then we'll, um, anyone feeling the hankering for reading? I don't want to be presumptuous and just say, oh, I'm going to read. I'll read. All right. Sean's in the house. Cool. Thank you. I'll go ahead and pray and then I'll hand it over, Sean. Uh, Jesus. Woo. Here we are. Thank you, Lord. Another day. You have woken us up to this new day. Your mercies are new every morning. God, we thank you for your word, your truth, for teaching us. God, soften our hearts to your, your truth this morning. Help us and lead us in this time. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. I don't know if your live is going, just so you know. Oh, really? Yeah, or at least on, because I always log into YouTube to kind of watch it from the too. If there's any message in and show it's on. Just show that there is a hmm, six. Should be. Yeah, we might have stepped on each other's toes and double streamed it. Oh. And then me shutting down my copy messed it up. Oh. Okay, no worries. I'm recording it locally, and then I'll just upload it after. Right. Sweet. All right. Yeah, so yesterday, just to give a little context, yesterday we read about um, the, the woman who was caught in adultery, and they were trying to trap Jesus, um, saying that she should be stoned and... He, he said, if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And then he stooped down, wrote in the, in the dirt, and um, they all started leaving. And Jesus said, where are your accusers, or has no one condemned you? And he said, and Jesus said, I can, neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave you your life of sin and that's where we pick up um, when Jesus spoke again to the people he said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life the Pharisees challenged him here you are appearing as your own witness your testimony is not valid Jesus answered even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness mm. is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple area near the place where the offerings were put yet no one seized him because his time had not yet come once more jesus said to them 
I am going away, and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, Will he kill himself? Is that why he says, Where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable, and what I have heard from him I tell the world. They did not understand what he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. Awesome. I have a footnote that says when he when he says I am who I claim to be some references say it he just simply said I am he yeah, yeah or just I am I think yeah So what's standing you guys today? I think about um, verse 12. I am the light of the world, and he who walks with me will not walk in darkness. <clears throat> and I think of the times that I fall short and <clears throat> and am in the darkness and because of his grace um can look to the light and turn and walk back to it hmm. and i am so grateful oh it gives me chills me too <laughs> oh man If we couldn't go back I light knowing the light and seeing it and then not being able to go back and what a gift it is yeah forgiveness a free gift Right when you said that, interesting, when you said that, I was looking at 36, so I was kind of like into space, but happened to be looking at verse 36, and it says, <clears throat> so if the sun sets you free, you will be really free. It reminds me where Paul talks about the, you know, once where you know, Jesus sets us free from the slavery of when we first first. to choose God you know in our daily walk
Damien, I think you're cutting out really bad. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'm going to stop streaming and just turn off OBS. Okay. If... Can you guys hear me okay? A uh, little bit, yes. Seems to be. Okay. Um. I was kind of caught off guard by this. Um, where's your testimony? We need two witnesses to what you're saying. And he said, I can provide those two witnesses, myself and the father. And that it kind of brought the reaction in me of <clears throat> what a lot of um, unbelievers, how unbelievers approach Christians or <clears throat> react to what Christians say when we try to witness it's like well the bible says this the bible teaches this and it's like well why should i believe your bible and it one it makes me wonder about like religious leaders i where he says i te i am my own testimony as is my father and they could have very easily come back and say well we don't we have, I mean, we obviously don't agree that God is your father. How can you, I mean, this is, this is the root of the problem that we have with you, Jesus, is you're claiming to be God. <laughs> that kind of thing. And it just, yeah, made me start to like, mm, probably shouldn't, but I wanted to play devil's advocate <laughs> against jesus i'm like that's not a good stance to take at all <laughs> now but you make a valid point because you know they they have a they have a good argument guess that's why it's called faith huh mm-hmm I've had that thought recently. It's an interesting thought. It's like a strange revelation that's been occurring for me. That, <clears throat> you know, this pers it's like the perspective of the world and the world's view of God. And it's like, it almost, it's like kind of, qu it questions like, who's God? Like, why should I believe there's a God? And, it's kind of that posture, you know, and I've, I've felt that before. And it, I, I even say it was to some extent prevalent in my thinking, even though I believed there's a part of me that was like, uh, that di almost didn't believe in a way. And then, but recently it's like, I have this new perspective that, <clears throat> well, wait a second, <laughs> if there is a God, that question is kind of funny. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, if God is, if he's really there and if he's created us and created this universe, it's just kind of silly to be to, to question his existence, I guess. Hmm. Yep. Like who are, who are we to, to question him? You know what I mean? And it says it's just that kind of in funny. like Job and in Exodus. Hmm. <clears throat> who are you who made man's mouth yeah isn't that funny like with the very mouth that he he created we're like we question you know his existence and I don't know, it's just a it's a funny thing but this weird i haven't ever really had that perspective until like you know this past year being in the word and Hmm. 
I think the, I think it's like, yes, the faith is there for us to believe without seeing, but eventually the proof will come. And in his case, it did come eventually, or he did prove himself to be God in flesh. <laughs> Simply with the resurrection and all in retrospect, 2000 years later, we look back and we're like, oh gosh, yeah, no kidding. Everything he said he was, he proved that he was. Yeah. Mm. On something that stood out to me was verse 28. You know, and, and leading up to that, you know, there he's saying, um, you guys are, you know, from below, I'm from above, you're of this world, I'm not of this world. And so he's kind of addressing that idea of like, hey, you guys got to kind of stretch your imagination that I did not come from an earthly father and, you know because they were debating that before they're like oh we know your parents and you know how can you be this deity because we know you came from mary and then assumed joseph you know was the father or somebody else you know was the father you know from our earthly perspective but then he says when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am, I'm God. And like, so they, he, to me, that's like Jesus challenging them to just like, yeah, take that step of faith and, you know, elevate Jesus to that kind of Godhead position. And, that's when you know everything changes so that's kind of just that clear clear statement of of faith and who who and <laughs> believing who jesus is that he is who he is claiming to be and like yeah that's a challenge and kind of like the bare minimum to get to that point of belief and faith yeah so sean when when he says when you lift up the son of man then you'll know that i'm he like from your perspective what does that mean it's it's kind of that that salvation call okay like like when you when when you put god you know at at, at the top of your life or put jesus you know uh, right at the top like putting him on that pedestal that you know, we might be putting something else up there or even like, you know, what, when you were saying before the, you know, idea of like, okay, I don't know if there is a God and there is a God, but this is my perspective of him. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, and that's who Jesus is, is, is the, I think the word is like personification of God. And that's why God sent Jesus is so that we could, you know, understand and relate to God, mm -hmm. you know, on that human level. Okay. I was thinking, it's interesting. Uh, I hadn't, when I read that, I was thinking differently. So lifting up being like, um, like giving him a place of priority in your life. That's what you're that was 
your interpretation when I read it, I thought he was talking more to like the Pharisees. When you lift up the Son of Man, meaning when you crucify me and kill me on the cross, then you will know that I am he. Then you'll know that, you know, I'm God, that I'm the Messiah. That's kind of what I was thinking because of everything that happens right when he when he dies right the this massive earthquake the sun goes dark for three hours the 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 people come out of their graves the the curtain to the holy of holies tears in two like <laughs> all these kind of like wild things happen yeah um but i like your thinking i like what i like what you're saying because well, it has the double meaning well, and then it, it just brings that it, it's not, you know, because it happens, you know, 2,000 years later, it still kind of happens for individuals, right? Like I think about mm -hmm. even your your testimony, Damien, of how, like, that story of when you, you know, came to Christ in Alaska and and you had that kind of, I mean, it's going to be unique to everybody, but you had that experience where, you know, you felt this like darkness upon you. Or, or I, mm. I, I don't know. I can't really remember or put justice to your story, but like, even, even for me, it was like when I, put my faith in Jesus it, it was almost like there was like some earthquake kind of like internally right it was something like with my heart that I experienced physically I was like whoa this is this is you know that sign this is that wonder like it felt like there was just this something was just holding and like squeezing on like my inner being. And then as soon as I mm -hmm. prayed that prayer, it released and like, it felt like my heart could actually beat fully, you know? And so, you know, even relating back to, you know, the earthquake and everything tearing when Jesus died, like that happened for everybody then and there physically. But then 2000 years later, he still happened individually for everyone. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and, and it's even more than just like, <clears throat> whether it's like a physical manifestation or, you know, kind of a spiritual thing that happens. He, he when we first believe, it also continues to happen i feel like in my life where it's like i'm surprised he does something in my life and <laughs> i'm like whoa that was amazing that was awesome you know <laughs> there's always these these little miracles that are just continuing to occur along the way that are you know surprising and exciting and i don't know just makes me fall in love with him more and more i guess When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. Hmm. Cool. Um, all right. Well, we have about five or six more minutes. Any other thoughts from the from the reading this morning? The one last thought I had was just, you know, Dan, you were talking, I think, at the beginning 
Um, I think it was, was it verse 12. I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That stood out to me. And as just a, a constant, it's like a, a constant reminder for me. Like I can choose to walk in the light of God or not like on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My life is so different when I choose to walk in the light. <laughs> it's just, it becomes more and more apparent like every day, <laughs> the, the older I get, you know, and the longer I, I guess, you know, I've believed or been a believer. It's just like, it just becomes more and more real to me. And the contrast between like what walking in the light versus walking in the darkness feels like is just becomes more and more just apparent, I think, for me in my life. I can confirm that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of actually a little bit not scary. But the further I go, the deeper I go, the more consistently I go. It's like, oh gosh, this is actually getting, this is actually feeling a little bit easier every day. Hmm. I hope I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And it's funny that when when you said that, I've always, you know, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It, it's like the physical weight being light. But then I had this revelation of like, my burden is light, like physical light. <laughs> so it's yeah, like he, cool. he's carrying the physical light. And so like I'm the light he, of the world. He, yeah, wow. he's the lantern, so hmm. huh, that's cool. It's a quirk of the English language, I guess. Right. But it but it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And that's why I'm challenged to tell yokes all the time. <laughs> God. <laughs> How do you do it, Dan? <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, uh, anyone feeling led to pray us out today? All right. I'll, I'll go ahead and close and we'll be on with our day. God, thank you for this time. Thank you that you, you light the path for us, Jesus. Giving us the truth. Um, showing us how to live. How to respond to people. How to love people well. What it truly means to love you and love others. God, give us the faith to do that today, um, to love you and the people around us well with your power. And we just surrender to you, your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, guys. See you later. Love you guys. See you. Have a great day, guys. Mm -hmm. You too. Good one.